Please welcome our next speaker, Rickard Steiber from HTC. Thank you, thank you so much. I think the VRLA team needs another applause. Let's give them a hand. So, when I grew up, I wanted to be a superhero. I wanted to change the world for the better. And for the first time ever, all of us can be superheroes. We can all change the world. We can go anywhere, we can be anyone, and we can create anything. I have two young daughters, Alexandra and Athena. They're sitting up here. Can you, can you wave? So, they love VR. They love going underwater with the blue. They love you know, going to the moon and doing tilt brush and painting. So with VR, for the first time ever, we're democratizing access to experiences. So before, only Jacques Cousteau could go underwater, and Neil Armstrong was the only one who could go to the moon. But now all of us can do that. So we, VR is really changing the world. But today, I want to talk about the real superheroes. I want to talk about the people who are building this new ecosystem. We are year one of VR, and we've seen the rise of a new breed of superheroes. You, the entrepreneurs, the startups, the developers, the creators, the big companies that are investing both in content and technology. So I want to talk a little bit about this VR system and how Vive is engaging with these superheroes and give you some updates on what's going on. So our mission is to unleash human imagination from the boundaries of reality. Very ambitious, and we're doing it with four pillars. Technology, marketplace, content, and innovation. So, a year ago, everyone had announced their first high-end headsets. You had the Vive, you had Oculus, but not a lot of people had them before. So it's less than a year ago that we actually made the mainstream. But today, the technology is not just the headset, it's an ecosystem of exciting devices. And the one that I'm most excited about right now is the tracker and the tracker technology. A tracker which you can put on anything, your tennis racket, your dancing shoes, your lightsaber, and that item becomes available in virtual reality. It's great for developers because you develop for only one thing, and it's great for consumers because you buy only one thing and you can put it on anything, so you don't fragment the ecosystem. The really interesting thing with the tracker is that it's going to change how virtual reality evolves. And I want to share one thing, how this would enable full body tracking. I think some of you have seen this video, but let's have a quick look. So this is from Reality Rig, basically having two trackers. You can see yourself in VR, and your friends can see you as well. So he put them on his feet, which enables you to move around and interact with objects, maybe kick some things, and of course, it, it, it could be avoiding things, it could be fighting things, it could be dancing, it could be anything, but it creates a new sense of presence in VR. People will be terrified because you'll kick things in your living room. <laughs> so, girlfriends and wives, beware, and boyfriends. So, we see that the, the creativity and the imagination we see from this community around Tracker is unstoppable. My favorite is from Master of Shapes. They put a tracker on a mobile phone, and basically, voila, two things happened. The hero in this alien shooter, who's in the Vive, suddenly had sidekicks on mobile phones who could look into the virtual reality experience and see what was going on, but they could also interact in virtual reality by shooting things in VR. So two things, actually, you have social sidekicks on mobile phones, but also the mobile phone become a window into the virtual world. Unlimited potential of what you can do with that. So the other thing that's happening in technology is that our eyes will be the game changer. And eyes, both because when we have eye tracking, you will be able to connect socially on a completely new level uh, in experiences. So you have foot body, but you also have eye contact. But of course, eyes will also be used to navigate and interact with objects uh, so I'm looking forward to sort of see all the innovation coming when it comes to eye tracking. So you can see this ecosystem with trackers, eye tracking, 
But of course, you have you know, haptic feedback, you have gloves, you have all kinds of new social technology. And of course, the Vive is going wireless this year, so you don't have to worry about the cord anymore. So one of the ways we're trying to support the ecosystem is through Vivex. So Vivex just recently announced uh, 33 new investments. So we've done over 60 investments the past year. And we're trying to invest in enabling technology, things that will help creators and developers to the next level, like wireless, like multiplayer, like social technology. It could also be things like eye tracking. And we're investing more and more in uh, enterprise tools, like for design, et cetera. So if you have a great idea, Please come to Vivex, and we'll see if we can support you. So all of this we're doing to the pursuit of full presence. We want you to have that experience where your visual system, your auditory system, and your body system is fully immersed so that you and your brain think that the experience is real. And this is definitely a new era of computing. This is uh, going to be the next mass medium, but it's also going to be the next way we interact with computers. So if you think back to the age of the PC, we started with the keyboard, uh, and you know, there was the, you guys, the geeks, who started the PC revolution. And then we went on to the web. And we basically you know, had, had the mouse. Uh, we eventually got the phone and the iPad, and we had touch. But now, with virtual reality, we're essentially our body is the interface. It's our movement. It is our voice. It's our eyes that are interacting with computers so we're becoming much more close to them. But also remember that we are in the early days. We're in year one, which is that it's you, the visionaries, it is you, the geeks, the you know, technology, the early adopters, the gamers, who are embracing this. But it wasn't games, it wasn't the early adopters that made PC big, web big, or mobile big. I see a lot of people here on the mobile phones, you're taking photos, social media. So you, of course you're doing games, but it's things beyond gaming that's going to make VR big. And we need to find out what those things are. So what we're trying to do is that we have a great partner, Steam and Valve, who's probably you know, the world's leader when it comes to understanding gaming and gamers. So at Vive, we're trying to sort of see how could we complement that? How could we accelerate the ecosystem? So we're looking at how can we bring developers and creators who have experiences around maybe education, creativity, social, immersive storytelling, and brands how can we make sure that those companies come a little bit quicker to VR? Because if we do that, VR will be much more valuable to everyone in society. So we'll get the teachers, we'll get the creators, we get the brands, we get Hollywood, and then this ecosystem will grow faster for all of us. So where we are now is that our main focus is the developers. We're trying, working really hard to recognize and reward developers. Uh, and we're looking at gaming and beyond gaming categories. We have now over 20,000 uh, signups, and we're looking for new ways for helping developers monetize and build their business early in the, in the game. So GDC was just up, there was a big GDC survey, and it seems like the community is embracing us because a large portion are developing for the Vive platform today, but when asked about the next uh, experience, it is overwhelmingly Vive, so we're very much appreciative of that. So what is this Viport thing, uh, which I'm running, by the way? Uh, and the way you should think about it is that it is the place where you as a consumer go to find your virtual reality experiences. And we don't really care which platform or device you are. It doesn't matter if you're on Vive or on Oculus or if you're on Daydream. We want to be this place where you go to find your great experiences, but also the point of departure where you start your journey into VR. So that's the way you should think about it. And we're doing it for VR in the home, VR on the move on mobile, VR in arcades, public spaces, and VR for schools and enterprises. So one of the things we're trying to do is innovate and help developers and creators uh, monetize in new ways, but also help consumers find new ways of accessing more content. So last week, we launched uh, the world's first VR app subscription service. And the way it works is that you as a consumer you pay a low monthly fee, $6.99 here in the US. You pick five apps, and then on a monthly cadence, you can keep them or change them. So the idea is that you'll probably keep buying your favorite experiences, but this gives you five extra experiences that you can continuously you know, try out for a low monthly fee of you know, seven bucks. 
So if you think about the titles that we have today, uh, here are some of the most popular ones that uh, currently we have thousands of signups coming in uh, every week now. And you know, if you look at the price of these titles, probably this is you know, 50, 70 bucks. So the value is, is very, very high. The other thing we launched uh, with our new SDK is also in-app purchases, which enable developers to also provide uh, virtual goods in their experiences to you know, make it a better experience for users, but also provide another business model. The second one is public spaces, arcades. So we have a showcase arcade called Viveland, uh, where we're trying to learn about how can you experience VR in public spaces. Because what we found out is like with the old internet cafes, when people don't have access to broadband in the old days, they went to cafes to get connected. And this is happening the same thing now with VR. So we're currently in a global pilot. Uh, we have signed up over 1,000 locations. And we're trying to figure out what is it the operators want. How does the business model going to work? So we are in, in China, we're in Japan, we're in the US, Canada, uh, UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Nordics. Uh, so once this pilot is done, which is going to happen in a couple of weeks, we're going to roll out this platform globally so that developers from around the world basically can build their brands in public spaces, monetize in a completely new channel, channel and then also your moms, your grandmoms can actually go into a public space, experience high-end VR, and we will have you know, an army of small businesses growing, uh, you know, showing VR, if it is in the cinemas like IMAX or MK2 or your local shopping mall or your local pub. So it's going to be exciting. Mobile. I think that we all agree that you know, we all have a smartphone. It's going to be mobile enabled. We all think that you know, 360 experiences are you know, OK. They're not fabulous. They're missing a lot of things. They're OK. No, sort of. Uh, so what we have done is that we launched uh, uh, Viport M, which is basically a, a mobile app store, but also a launcher for uh, primarily Android and Daydream. So we only launched it in China because, of course, Google have figured this out everywhere else. So there's no need for us to do anything here. But we can help mobile developers and creators launch in China, which is the world's largest smartphone market. And this is, of course, a great potential. So we can bring them into the home, arcade, mobile phones, and finally, we do believe that a large part of our sales today are actually going to enterprises and schools. So we do think that when you're going to buy your next car at BMW, of course, you're going to build your own car in VR. Uh, you're going to test drive it. And it's, it's interesting because you have Jaguar, you have Porsche, uh, you have Tesla, uh, you have everyone is actually doing this now. But it's not just going to be cars. Of course, it's going to be IKEA. It's going to be your next uh, sort of travel destination, you're going to check it out in VR first. And the interesting thing for developers, I think there is a branded opportunity here. So I'm going to show you Nissan. Uh, they launched uh, their little car commercial in a different way. So they brought together Star Wars and ILM, Lucasfilms, with their car launch. Let's have a quick look. Watch your back. There's one. So not, not your average car, I tell you. And of course, uh, this will also help fund some developers who need some, uh, some money. The other way to do it is to talk to, is to, talk to Vive Studios. We work with first and second party studio, which means that we are investing in your content projects. So please come to us with great ideas. It needs to be ideas that you know, push the boundaries of presence, needs to push the boundaries of what virtual reality is. Uh, and it doesn't have to be games. We love education, we love enterprise, we love uh, all kinds of sort of immersive experiences. Um, one of those experiences that I think is very interesting, we just launched uh, Make VR. So Make VR, you go into virtual reality, you can create anything like a little robot or a wedding ring for your partner uh, or something complex. And it's connected 
to 3D printing. So if you have your own 3D printer, you can do that. Or if you connect to a service like Shapeways, then you can have it printed. So it could be a little robot in platinum or your wedding ring or you know, whatever it might be. Very romantic. <laughs> so uh, we're in LA, and Hollywood is here. And I can tell you, Hollywood is really here, because this year is going to be the year of AAA titles coming. There will be Batman, Spider-Man, Justice League. All of your favorite superheroes will come into VR. And, uh, and not only that, think of VR, you could have your own IMAX theater, so you don't have to look at that crappy tablet, Alexandra. Uh, you, <laughs> you could actually you know, have something much more immersive. But there is one movie that's going to change everything. There's going to be one movie that's going to define VR to the masses. There's been movies defining robots, artificial intelligence, but there's going to be one movie that's going to define VR for the masses. And it's going to be Ready Player One. So Warner and Steven Spielberg is releasing Ready Player One next year, end of March, so pretty much a year from now. Uh, we partner with them to try to make VR come alive on this journey for the next year, creating experiences that you know, will you know, spark people's imagination. So we'll come back to you with more information, uh, but we are looking for your ideas and your support, uh, but it's going to be an, an epic journey. But the most epic journey and the most important journey is for us to use VR and our superpowers to make the world a better place. So we started this $10 million initiative together with the United Nations called VR for Impact. VR for Impact is not a Vive initiative. It's open for anyone. So we're going to invite our friends at Facebook and AMD and Intel to, to join all of us, because only together can we make a change. And the idea here is that UN has these 17 sustainability goals that we need to fix, otherwise we're and it's around <laughs> poverty, climate change. It's around the big issues. I couldn't say that word. i sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Dad did a mistake. So, so during this year, we'll come out with some candidates. So the idea here is to bring together the courses that wants to change the world, United Nations and the many ones, together with the developer community who actually can create these immersive experiences, put some money on the table to create experiences that will you know, make everyone understand that we have some issues and we need to take responsibility and make a change. We need to create those experiences. You are the ones who can create them, but you don't know the causes. The causes don't know you, so we want to bring that together. So that's the purpose, and the first step it's going to be next Saturday, not tomorrow, next Saturday, which is Earth Day. So Earth Day uh, is the day where we actually stop and think a little bit about our Earth, about our planet, our oceans, uh, and climate change. So what we wanted to do is that we were going to announce some candidates. We had over 1,400 candidates that applied for this program. Uh, we selected just over 30, which we're talking to now, and we're going to announce maybe two to four next Saturday. But I wanted to introduce a sneak peek of one of them because this company are basically giving the overview effect of what's going on in our planet. This company will give us a sense for probably the most important insight is that we're all on this planet together. And our internal politics and squabbles and things are meaningless because we're all on this planet. So let me welcome up Space VR. So 60 seconds. Space VR, the ultimate pitch. Hi everyone. Who wants to go to space? I think we can all agree that now, more than ever, is a time where we all need to come together, where we all need to experience 
that we're all one civilization. And that was my dream to bring that to everyone about a year and a half ago. And I'm very excited to announce to you that now we're closer than ever. We're already paid to go up on SpaceX here at the end of the year. I'd like to introduce to you Overview One, the world's first virtual reality camera satellite. We're extremely honored to be picked by HTC Vive as one of their VR for Impact companies. If you want to come see the satellite, potentially touch it and put your DNA in space. <laughs> Only from your hand. <laughs> then please, please come by the HTC Vive booth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, by coincidence, many years ago, I signed up with Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic to go into space. And I wanted to show you why and what this fine gentleman is talking about. So if we can lower the lights a little bit, and we'll show you some images that we're hoping for. It's a very risky adventure. May not even, even launch. SpaceX are doing a great track record, but you never know. So let's have a look at the view from space. So hopefully, one day, all of us can go into space. We could democratize access to experiences. Alexandra and Athena can go underwater or to the moon, but all of you are going to go into space. So let's change the world together. Thank you very much. Thank you.